Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is 3.30 on the dot on this beautiful Monday evening going into Tuesday. And I woke up about a half an hour ago. And I got up. I don't know why I have my watch still in here. I should put it in here. When I was in Florida. And um, I got up and I also have a caramel apple uh, sucker. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lollipop. I'm digging through my purse right now for my lip balm. Um, I have all kinds of stuff in here. I have my Michael Myers pen <laughs> that I got when I opened those uh, Halloween collectibles with Melissa. I have my reading glasses. I have all kinds of stuff in here. But I can't find my lip balm. I have my eye drops, re-wetting drops. So I got up, well I woke up out of the weirdest dream in the world. It was kind of a good dream, I'll tell you about it in a second. Okay, here's the lip balm. Like, this must have been part of a dream earlier that I had. That the end of the applicator on the lip gloss was like, un like it was like fraying at the end, it was like unraveling. I don't know why I just remembered that. But anyway, um, I had to pay my office rent. So I ran the check under just now and put it underneath their door. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that office. I gotta figure out if I'm gonna keep it. <clears throat> or if I'm gonna get rid of it. I've been thinking, you know, for like months now, like to use it as like a place to write, which was what I was doing for a while. I've also been thinking about subleasing it. Because my landlord said I could do that. I don't really pay that much in rent because I was on a fi fixed rate when I got it like so many years ago and it's in like such a prime location. I love it. Which is another reason why I don't want to get rid of it. And, uh, but I had thought about turning it into like, Alex was like, why don't you just turn it into like a YouTube studio? Then you could go in there in the middle of the night and you could like film all your videos and then you could just like have them all ready to like upload the next day. And I really actually think it's not a bad idea. Um, it's just, you know, putting the work in to do that. Which really wouldn't take a lot of work. I would just have to paint a wall. The one room I would use for like my Peterisms videos. And then the other room I would use for like my drama videos. And then I could use any of it for like my booktube stuff, you know. So I thought about doing that. But anyway, I had to run that um, over there. I'm also on a month-to-month -month lease, so I can get out of it whenever I want. thing is I've got so much like furniture in there that like I don't even know what to do with the artwork has been like off the walls I don't have any expensive artwork it's all like cheap stuff in there but oh I actually do have a couple of those I need to bring home of those storyteller um, paintings that my mom and I collected together I have like three in there, I think. Two or three, three or four, that are framed. But um, all, the war all the art is down off the walls and has been for like a couple years now. And um, I have like this big, big bamboo rug 
that the other rugs have been like rolled up. I've given like a lot of stuff away. But anyway, I hardly ever even go in there. It's pointless to keep. Um, anyway, I'll figure out what to do with it. I'll figure out what to do with it. Um, <sighs> Alex's mom wanted to use it for a little while. Um, so, I need to talk to her and see if she's still interested in using it. I've done a tour of it before. I don't know if I've done it on this channel or what. You should go see it. It's a cool office. Just part of my hesitation of giving it up. I'd like to like, use it in some capacity, you know? But it still has my TV and VCR over there. I should at least bring that home, but then I have to clean the basement out to put it in my basement. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I woke up out of this really strange dream, but it wasn't like a bad dream. I think it was like Alex and I, and then like another guy and two girls, two women. And we were like in a video game and we couldn't figure it out at first. Like we kept on like waking up like in this world and like every time we would wake up, we were like running down this, like we kept on like waking up, like it happened like three or four times where we were like all of us like in a group were like running down towards like this river and there was this building and we had to like run over this bridge and there was like nobody out. And then like, so like, like the third time Alex was like, does anybody else notice like how quiet it is? There's like nobody else out here, but I feel like we're being watched. And so then like we got like real paranoid that like we were being watched. But like in our minds, we knew like that we had to like, like accomplish this. There was something that we had to do. And so we were all like running through this town. It was like a modern town. It was like today. And it was like these office buildings on this river. And then we were like in this residential area where there were like these rather big houses. And we were like in this house, like rifle, like rifle, rifling around looking for something. Like in the kitchen drawers or something. We found it. <clears throat> and then we like left. And like the third time, it like all of a sudden like there was this car at the end of this parking lot and that was like where we started apparently. Like when we came, got out of it, we started running. And so like we would like, the third time we like came back for this car and we got in this car and we started driving. And all of a sudden we're like in this tunnel and we all get out of this tunnel and it was like a tunnel like, I don't even really know how to explain it. Like in the, the middle of the earth or like on another planet or something. It was like this tunnel that had like like a cave that had like stalagmites and stuff coming down. It was like this like earthy tunnel, you know? And um, it, there was this thing by my foot and Alex was like, it was like this ball and he was like, but like I knew like it was a grenade. And so like we, like Alex was like, pick it up and throw it. And I was like, what? And they were all standing there and they're like, throw it as far as you can. And so I took this thing and I like chucked it way down and it like blew up like way down in the, um, <laughs> it blew up like way down in the, into the area by where there was like this lake. And there was like, all of a sudden we saw this, like these things go bloop, 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 bloop. They were like coins that were just like in the middle of the air, right? Like coins that were just like hanging out, like in the middle of the air. And then there were like these like powers at the bottom of our feet that were like underneath each coin. And 
like over the top of the cave was like this replay of me like having thrown this thing and like what it looked like coming back. And they were like, all like we were all watching this replay and they were like, you threw it really far. And I was like, yeah, I guess I did. And I was kind of like proud of myself. And then Alex goes, we're in a video game. And we were like, what? And he goes, we're in a video game. That's why we continue to like, we're continuing to live this over and over and over again. And then like, and he goes, and these are coins for points. And so anyway, something happened and we like, like all blew up and we were back like in the car and we were sitting there and it was like this four door like sedan and we were sitting there in the car and it was like, I was in like the back and Alex was like up here and then there was like this other guy that was driving and then I was in the back seat with these two girls, these two women and they're like, and Alex was like kind of like in charge of us and he was like, okay, we like, we have to like really think this through this time and the one the one girl said well we the one woman she was like we got to go to the movie theater first and make it through the movie theater before we can make it to the city and there was like like we all knew this there was this movie theater apparently and it was like right across from this parking lot that we were like parked in so we got out and they all like took off for this like movie theater and I said to Alex I said I, the car in front of us where there was parked was like a guy and he was like parked just like this sitting there and he was like this older guy <clears throat> and I said Alex look there's somebody in that car and he's watching us and Alex turned around he was like the guy like turned and like looked right at us and he's like he sees us he sees us and so we started like running and there were like people sitting in all these cars in the parking lot it was like really scary and so we started running for this movie theater that looked just like an office and so we got inside this movie theater and as soon as we like opened the door it was like all of these lines going up and down you know like i don't even know how to explain it um it is so hot in this car though well, maybe because I have it set on 74. Um, you know, like, when you're walking, like, in a museum or something, and there's, like, the ramps that go up and down. It was like that, like, carpeted ramps, you know, with, uh, what do you call it? Um, like, with railings, like, arm rails in between it. And so Alex said, we're going to have to hop this and get through. Every uh, we, oh, we were talking to the girl that was like running like at the front. And we were like, we have to be with our friends up there. And she was like, I'm sorry. She's like, but the movie st is starting now. And she was like, and there, like, there was a massive line ahead of us. And Alex like grabbed my hand and he goes, come on. And we like jumped over all of these railings. And we got up there and we knew this girl that was like... <laughs> Um, girl, woman, whatever, that was, like, the one taking the tickets. And Alex was, like, he had, like, a $20 bill in his hand. And he, and I had a $20 bill in my hand. And we were, like, and she was, and he was, like, what will it take for you to, like, let us in? And he goes, you've seen us come through here so many times before. Please just let us in. We've got to be with our friends. And she was, like, no, I can't let you in. And he looked at her and he was, like, please, please let us in. And so she, like, took her $20. She was, like, fine, just go. She was, like, but and he, oh, we were, like, we'll sit on the floor. And, and then I started saying something about, like, I sat on the floor for the movie Titanic. And Alex was, like, come on, let's go. <laughs> and so we, like, ran in there. And I can remember walking into this movie theater. It was like, this real small movie theater. And it was packed. Like, there were people everywhere. And you know, like, the scenes at the beginning of, like, in the movie... In the movie, uh, oh, what's the movie? The parody of Scream. You know what I'm talking about? Where they're, like, throwing popcorn at the beginning. Like, in the movie theater, it's, like, really, like, crazy and loud. It was like that. Like, people were throwing popcorn everywhere. And I looked at Alex and I said, I wish we had gotten popcorn. And he was like, what? Because they had, like, these huge buckets of popcorn and it smelled so good. Like, buttered popcorn. And I said, I wish we had gotten popcorn. He goes, we're not here for the movie. And so we were looking for our friends and like Alex took off and I got lost and, and he was like like 10 feet in front of me and all these people were in front of me and I was like, Alex, Alex, Alex. And he was like, turn, he turned around and he was like, come on, like that. And then I woke up. Not a crazy dream. Can you see me or is it out of focus? So yeah. There was more to it than that. Like, 
the tunnel thing with like the coins and stuff. We walked down this like tunnel, like we had been down this tunnel before and like had seen these coins and stuff. And we knew that there was like an area that we needed to get to. There was more to this dream. I like, but I don't remember all the specifics of all of it. But isn't that crazy? I was sitting there and I was like throwing on my shirt and getting dressed <coughs> to take the dogs out. And I was like, and to come vlog. And I was like, I wonder, um, I'm in a good pair of sweat shorts and my t-shirt that I wore tonight to Tanya's for our literature um, group tonight, literature meeting. And I was like, I wonder why I had that dream. And then I remembered that Ernest Klein's Ready Player Two comes out this month, but I don't know. I already pre-ordered it, so I already have it purchased and bought and everything on Audible. I'm just waiting for it to come out. So I don't know when it comes out, and I was like, would that not be so weird if it came out today? Like, if I looked in my, because I pre-bought it, and when you pre-buy a book on Audible, like, it just shows up in your library. I was like, wouldn't that be so weird if I, like, opened it and it was there? I am really, really excited about, um, about listening to that book though, about reading that book. Did you guys read Ready Player One by Ernest Klein? Oh my God, it was so good. Okay, so I did a buddy reads with this booktuber. I don't even know if she's on booktube anymore. My first year or two on booktube, like I did a lot of buddy reads with people and that's where you like read a book with somebody else. Um, I did The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead with this guy that lives in Chicago. He, I don't know if he's on YouTube anymore, booktube anymore either, but we ended up like DNFing the book. We didn't finish it and we both had like a really hard time getting into it and I can remember what was interesting about it was later, like a year later I think, or I don't know, six or eight months later, I tried to read it, listen to it on my own, and it ended up becoming one of my favorite books. It was so good. And then Colson Whitehead, I think, won the Pulitzer that year for it. If you've never read The Underground Railroad, it is fantastic. Um, God, it's still so hot in here. And then, but with this, uh, this other, this booktuber, she and I read um, Ready Player One. <laughs> I don't remember her ever doing like a review video of it though. So anyway, um, yeah, but that was fun. And um, I remember having a really hard time getting into it and thinking like, I had seen it at the bookstore like several times and I was like, I'm not gonna like this. And I was like, I have no interest in reading this. And it was kind of one of those books that like everybody on booktube was talking about. You know, like typically people on booktube talk about like fantasies, like, um, well, like when I started on booktube, like everybody always referenced Harry Potter books. Like that's not so much anymore. But then, like, The Lunar Chronicles by, uh, why can't I think of her name? Uh, I can't remember. And then Marie Lu, and then, um, a lot of people talked about, uh, what's the series? I watched the one movie where she's, like, in that town. I feel like it's with the girl that was in, well, The Hunger Games, but... People like the really, like, long... The Court of Mist and Fury. People like the long fantasy books. Um, series. And that, I felt like that's what anybody, everybody was talking about at the time that I started BookTube. But there would be, like, that book that came along that, like, everybody talked about. Um, the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas was one of them. And then... Um, a Dumplin' was another one, which is one of my all-time favorite books. So is uh, The Hate You Give. Um, but Dumplin' by Julie Murphy, I love her so much. <laughs> she and her friends, her two friends, because I follow her on Twitter, they went as different Moiras from Schitt's Creek, and it was so hilarious. My battery is already half dead, you guys. I cannot believe it. And I don't know if the other battery that I have with me is charged or not. You guys, I'm going to be so over it. Where am I at on battery time. I'm at like 19 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, she has a new book coming out. I think it comes out this spring. And I can't remember what it's called, but it's in the Dumplin' 
what was the second book in the Dumplin? It's not a series, but it's like the world. If you read uh, What's Her Face, the Creekwood world, Simon world, Becky Albertalli, like that whole world where there's like the different character, like the different books, like Leah on the Offbeat was the second book that he was like, or she, Leah was Simon's best friend. It's like very much like that. Millie, the second one is Millie, something Millie. Um, oh, I love the second one too from, I've read all of Julie Murphy's books, but she actually read a book that was, she wrote a book that was really, really good. I can't remember what it's called, something blue. And it was about this girl that was like a swimmer and she wanted to go to college to be a swimmer. And it had a lot to do with sexuality and like I didn't how we identify. It was very interesting. Um, and she colored her hair blue. I can't remember what that book was called. And then like her mom was gone or had passed away. I don't remember. And she and her dad lived in this trailer that ended up becoming like getting destroyed in like I think Katrina and or something like that and it was so Ramona Blue Ramona Blue it was so good and it like really didn't get good reviews and I can remember I, because Julie Murphy in Dumplin was like very snarky like Dumplin Willow Dean was very snarky and that was like one of the things I really liked about her was she wasn't like you know like when you read the character like that is like bullied or made fun of is like apologetic and really kind of like oh I wish everybody liked me you know like that like probably how I was as a kid that was bullied like Willow Dean was not that I mean she was kind of could be like kind of rude sometimes and I loved that about her I mean she's a really honest character right well it was pretty upbeat though like it was kind of funny it was like this group of girls like they have you not seen if you've seen the movie on Netflix the movie is fantastic the movie is a lot different than the book the book focuses a lot more on like the love affair that she has with this guy that she works with and it also focuses a lot and does a lot of flashbacks of her and her aunt I wish they had shown more of that but I will say that the character the people that played the characters in the movie were unbelievable the girl that played a dumpling I can't remember what her name is she was also in that movie I read that, that book that year too that was another book that people were talking about a lot the Josh Mellerman book um that they made into a movie, Bird, Bird, Bird Box. That was a good. That was a good book. That was that book was a better. I mean, they're all better books than movies, right? I mean, most of them. But I mean, I feel like Dumplin carried its own. Oh my God, that talent scene with Dumplin, where she was singing to the Dolly, or she was out to the Dolly Parton song. Like you, that was written so well in the book, but like you couldn't, you couldn't write it the way that it played out in the movie. Like it was so fantastic in the movie, and. um Jennifer, uh, what's her name? Oh, uh, why can't I think of her name? Brad, Brad Pitt's ex and the one that was in Friends. Jennifer Aniston. I'm not a huge lover of her, but I will say that in the last couple years, like, I really think she has shown her worth as an actress, and she was phenomenal in Dumplin'. So, if you haven't checked out that, you should check that out. Um... But I think like a lot of people's response to Ramona Blue was that they wanted this really upbeat story and Ramona Blue was not that. Like, I mean, even though she tried to stay upbeat, it was like all this like stuff, horrible stuff happened to her. And um, <laughs> she lived in like a touristy town, I remember. And she like had this like relationship. I don't know, it was just a sad book. I will tell you that, and I don't even remember what this book was about. You guys know how much I talk about and tell books. The fact that I don't remember it should be testament to like, but <clears throat> um, Julie, Murphy's first, Julie Murphy's first book was Side Effects May Vary. And I read Dumplin' and then I read Side Effects May Vary and I don't remember Side Effects May Vary at all. Like I don't remember the characters. I don't, oh they already have their Christmas tree up. I was gonna show Christmas decorations, wasn't I? But I don't remember the characters. I don't remember anybody that was in that book. I don't remember the storyline. I don't remember any of it. So, I don't know that if that speaks to how great that book was or not, but but anyway, there's always these popular books that come up on BookTube, right? That everybody's like, you have to read, you have to read, you have to read. And, um, and then like 
there's something that happens on booktube i don't know like i mean i spent so much money my first year on booktube because i was like doing book hauls and i was like constantly like writing down books i wanted to buy and i was so excited by all that i don't buy that many books anymore because i don't I'm like, I'm not, I already have a ton of books that I want to read that like, I'm not going to fill my bookshelves with 20 more books and spend all this money that I don't need to be spending anyway, you know, and the library is a great asset. So, um, and I, as much as I like books on bookshelves, I'm kind of at the point in my life, like this is kind of like this weird turn that I had that I'm also like with the exception of like 20 books, maybe 10 or 20 books, like all of the books that I have, I could give away if I've read them all. Like there's not really any reason for me to keep a lot of these books. Like they didn't like get the story had an impact on me and stuff, but it's like, hell, I talk more about Audible and it's not like I have a physical copy of that, you know? Um, my friend Valerie was actually asking me tonight. She was texting me because she was like, what was that series that you wanted me to read? And I was like, Louisiana Longshot. It's the first book in the Janet DeLeon Misfortune series. By the way, Janet DeLeon is on Twitter if you guys would like to follow her. She has uh, like the Sinful Lady Society linked underneath there. But um, Valerie was asking me if it was available in physical copy. Does anybody know if the Janet DeLeon... I feel like I've seen physical copies of it. But she wanted to know if... Um, it was available in physical copy. So I was like, I don't know, but I'm sure it is. So can you guys let me know if any of you out there know if it is available in physical copy or not? So yeah. So Dumplin. I'm trying to think of another book that came along that everybody was like, you have to read this book. I mean, there were a lot, there's a lot of authors and a lot of people that people were like, you have to read this book, this series of books or whatever. Who's the one that wrote the, Marissa Meyer is who wrote the Cinder series or the Lunar Chronicles. You know, I only ever read Cinder and I didn't finish that series. And I have to say that that series was really good. I really liked that series. I really liked Cinder. I didn't finish the rest of it. And, and now going back, I'm kind of like, would I even remember like what happened in Cinder? I think so. So, The Lunar Chronicles is a retelling of a lot of the fa fairy tales <clears throat> in modern times. And so, Cinder was Cinderella. And there's, like, Rapunzel. And then there's... Scarlet is... <sighs> Which one is Scarlet? I think it's... It's not Little Red Riding Hood. It's, um... Snow White. There's a couple of them. But anyway... So when I would go places and I would see Ready Player One, which is what I was talking about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, my battery is on is dying. Seriously, you guys, I am gonna be so upset if I get to the if. Okay, well, I'm just gonna say right now, if I change this battery and it's dead too, then you'll understand why the vlog just ended tonight. And I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And if I can replace the, the battery and it is not um, dead, well then, fantastic, you know? Which it shouldn't be because it's been charged all day long, I think. Unless it's the one that I had in my bag earlier. I don't know. I just, I grabbed my camera when I left to go to Tanya's earlier because we had our literature meeting tonight. And Tanya was like, it's so nice out. It was in the 70s today. So Tanya was like, it's so nice out today. Why don't you come over and we'll sit on the patio and do like our part, like where we just be on the same phone together. We had so much fun. And, um, so I'm going to pull in here and change this battery. <laughs> and then Alex put our lamps up tonight. He got these color changing light bulbs from Amazon. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? At first I was kind of like, this is corny, but I actually really, really like it. It's on Google home. So you have to download like Google home and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's like light bulbs that like change and you can make your room like any color that you want it. I'm like so obsessed with it, you guys. And um, maybe I'll do like a review video of it. <laughs> People will be like, yeah, we these have been around forever, Peter. So anyway, I um, while I was at Tanya's tonight, he put up the lamps of my aunts, um, the blue and white like China lamps. And they put the light bulbs in it and the new lampshades that we bought. And the new lampshades look fantastic with it. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And um, then we all you have to do is get 
the, what do you call it, the new um, nightstands until we can, you know, paint the room. I'm kind of trying to let this run out to the very end of 30 minutes. And then, um, all we have to do is get the new nightstands and then like paint the room and stuff. And then our bedroom is kind of like done. Oh, I did today. I ended up getting the Pottery Barn. Um, I'm playing with my sandal. Can you hear? I ended up getting, hold on. It's going to stop. We're right at the minute. 29, 58. 50. Okay, I'm back. Well, it's not flashing as of yet. But why is it not focusing? Okay. Which means it should be okay. It looks like it's a full battery, but sometimes what it does is it goes from like full battery to like flashing like that. Well, I'm just gonna start driving and then we'll see. I have my cup that I use for my Starbucks coffee today. And then I also have water. And I'm gonna try to, after I get done with this, even though it's late because I slept so much tonight, I slept like four hours. I'm gonna try to finish my Jana DeLeon book. Um, I've got like exactly I've got like less than two hours left to finish it. So we'll see. I probably won't be able to stay up that late tonight. But now, see, I'm wide awake. But tonight, because like I'd ask Alex what he wanted to do as far as like um, this Christmas. It's not really Christmas. It's just, you know, like wintry flannel duvet cover and shams and stuff that I wanted to get. I really wanted the red tartan plaid one. And so I was like, which one do you want to get? Because he really wanted to be part of buying the bedding that we have on the bed now, which I just have to tell you. I mean, I've loved our bed because our bed is so comfortable, but what a difference it makes to like come into the, because I like, of course, like we've been making the bed every day since we bought it now for like the last two or three days, right? I mean, we always make the bed, but like we pull up the, you know, the sheets and stuff or the comforter, but like the last two to three days, like to, um, like have the blanket at the end and the big pill throw pillows and everything. It's just been so fantastic and nice. It is so hot in here, you guys. It just looks so nice. And um, so today, I bought the, and I think that when we paint the wall, like the dark gray, I think it'll even look nicer in there. But we, um, I, so today I got online and I was like, do I want these red tartan plaid ones from Williams-Sonoma? I'm just gonna spend the money. And then we can use them year after year after year. Somebody had recommended to me to use Eddie Bauer. Eddie Bauer has a lot of really cute um, duvet covers that are plaid. The thing is, is that, I mean, I would love to have a couple of them because they're like blue and some are like off-white, you know, tan, green. Did I see a green one? I don't know, but anyway. They're all about the same amount of money for a king size bed, like they're expensive. So I was like, okay, pick the one you like the most. I really, really liked the Pottery Barn one. So I ordered the king size duvet, king size California, king size duvet, and two shams. I ordered that today. So we can stop talking about the plaid tartan duvet cover. It, it's not really red tartan plaid like what tartan plaid is, but I still really like it. And side by side, because of course, like, I mean, I, you guys, I look at this stuff and 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 look at this stuff. Like, I cannot just like impulse buy. I mean, sometimes I impulse buy, but like with stuff like this, I can't. And so I had those pictures up today and I was like looking at both of them. I was like, just order one of them. So quality wise, I probably should have gone with William Sonoma, but I ended up going with the Pottery Barn ones. They're cuter, I thought. And, um, and they're Christmassy, but they're not as Christmassy as the other ones. And so I thought, you know, they're more like wintry, like we can have them, you know, uh, for the wintry months too. So I got those. Made videos today. Man, when I woke up today, I have to tell you, like I was so, it wasn't even that I was tired. I like, I was like lacking any kind of like motivation today, but it wasn't like in a bad kind of way of like lacking motivation, like, being like negative about the world. It was nothing like that. It was, I went outside to read like, so on um, my Peterism's channel, we're doing the book, The Magic by Rhonda Byrne. And today was day one. So I had to read the introduction, which was longer than I thought it was. It was like all of the chapters, there was like two or three chapters leading up to the, the day one. And it was like 28 pages or something. So I had to read the 28 pages and then I had to read day one, which was like five or six pages. So I was sitting outside reading while the dogs were running around and stuff for a little while. 
and it just was like such a beautiful fall day like it wasn't like perfectly sunny it was cloudy it was kind of downcast a little bit <clears throat> but it was just so beautiful outside and just and it was warm and I just sat there on the chair and I was just like listening to the world around me and I was like I don't know it just felt really like speaking of the book magic it just felt really magical and really powerful and um, I honestly just like was like I could just sit out here for the rest of the day just sit and sit and sit you know It'd be nice to have a picnic. <laughs> a fall picnic. I don't know how long the weather is supposed to be nice. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I'll go get some stuff and put it in a basket and put it out in my backyard and do a little fall picnic for um, my uh, Peter Does Stuff channel. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? I had all these ideas of stuff that I wanted to do on that channel. I wanted to do like taking video of Halloween decorations while Halloween came and went. And then I wanted to do a video of like carving a pumpkin and then Halloween came and went. I, we still have our pumpkins on our front porch. They're still in really good shape and so are my mom's. Man, I didn't water my mom's for a couple days. I have actually, I haven't watered my mom's for a couple days. And um, I need to. And they're still like thriving. And like the last time that I like watered them when they looked like they were dying, like I went and I watered them like really heavy that night. And I'll water them tomorrow or tonight when I get, well, probably tomorrow because I don't want the water to wake up Alex because you can hear it inside. Um, but when I watered them the next day or like an hour, I think it was like an hour later, I like watered them and then we left and then we came back like an hour later. Um, it was like, they were like unbelievably beautiful. in my life right now. So just somebody asked a question on here the other night and they were like, are you happy or are you content? And like, whatever, you know. And I said, yeah, I think I am most of the time. And I was like reading back over the comments that other people had like responded and, and replied to it, you know. The next day I was like looking at it. You know, like, not everything in my life is perfect. You know, I have problems of things that, like, that I don't necessarily talk about on here. And, you know, um, I mean, like, Tani and I were talking a lot about this tonight because our, um, our Zoom meeting was a lot about, like, spiritual belief. And she was like, you know, you're so different than how you were, like, five or ten years ago. She was like, you were constantly just like, oh, 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 very just nervous, you know, nervous energy. And I have to get this done, this done, this done. I have to get this done. I have to get this done. And she said, you know, you've seemed so like just, she's like, you know, you talk about peace and serenity all the time anymore. She's like, what do you think is like the number one thing that got you there? And this wasn't like in our Zoom call or the Zoom meeting. This is like afterwards. She and I were just talking there about it. I took her to go get a fountain pop. Oh, you know what I forgot? I have these peanut butter cookies back here. Oh my God, I do. I have these peanut butter cookies back here. Well, I'll save them for when I listen to my audiobook. That'll be fun. And I said, you know, Tanya, I said, I think like one of the, the main, first of all, like we talked about this for a long time, but like, coming like full circle around it, I said, I think it was really allowing the program to work in my life and not being resistant to allowing the program of recovery work in my life, you know, not questioning things. And, um, you know, when somebody would make a suggestion and I was saying that 
knew there were moments in the last three years where I had been like so full of rage and anger. And like when I look back, I mean, and maybe not like tons, but maybe like two or three moments where I look back at those and I'm just like, I'm so not proud of those moments. Like I'm not like, that was obviously who I was at that moment, but that's not who I want to be. And if that's not who I want to be, then I need to see like, well, what was going on with me at that time? You know, and because I am a believer, you know, that when we're full of anger and rage and we're taking it out on somebody that typically it's not, you know, really about that person. Really there's other stuff going on inside of you or in your life or, you know, you, there's an emptiness there. You are not not full of peace and serenity in your life. Like I really truly do believe that, right? Like the work is within yourself. And I'm like, I just was like, I, I'm not, like I'm not happy. Like I could really, like if you had asked me that same question, three years ago, like, and put the lasso of truth around me, I was not happy. I was not, like, on a daily basis, like, content with my life. I think I wanted to be. I think I believed that I was. I think I, like, if you had just asked me, like, if we were having a conversation, I think I would have said, yeah, like, sure, I'm happy, you know, like, but I don't really think that I knew what, like, happiness was back there, you know, and, like, to me today, happiness equals the, uh, the absence of chaos, you know, cease fighting anyone and anything, <clears throat> the evidence of peace and serenity in my life, um, The gratitude is a huge part of it. She and I were talking about that tonight. I was like, that's why I'm so excited about, you know, doing this gratitude book for 28 days, which it's funny because like, I always talk to people about it in my personal life and when I'm, um, I can never get anybody to do it. You know, they're always just like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like, you know, like, I look back and have you been like that at moments in your life where like if you were having a conversation with somebody and they said like are you truly happy I mean people are probably like well how do how do you know then that now you really are because if you had asked me how do I know back then I wouldn't have been able to verbalize it really I would have been like it would have been things like well you know I'm happy in this and I'm happy in that and I'm and I'm happy because of this, and I'm happy because of that. Not like, these are the things that are contributing to my happiness. These are the things, the, these are the skills, the tools, and the themes that make me, and not happy, like, I think, I think we think of happiness, like, what is happiness, right? Like, I think we think of happiness as being this, like, overwhelming joy. Like, I don't think of happiness that way today. I think of happiness as being, like, an extreme level of being content. There's really nothing to complain about today, you know? Well, as somebody that used to look for things to complain about, not even being aware that I was looking for things, these cookies are going to drive me crazy until I bite into one. Not even being aware that I was looking for things to be angry about, but I really was, you know? And... I don't want to live with that in my heart today. I have three cookies left. I don't want to be that way today. I just don't. It's not worth it to me. I'm not happy that way. And I don't want to be that way. And people that are angry and miserable and rageful all the time are always justifying, and I did too, I did the same thing, are always justifying their stance or why it's okay to feel the way they do. And we're talking about justifiable anger, and that's fine, but it does you no good. And I think, like, that's what I told Tanya tonight, like, I knew it because of my mother's passing, but somewhere along the way, like, I really understood that my days are numbered 
worked and you know my days on earth like I'm only here for borrowed time I don't want to spend that time being consumed by anger hate and rage and focused on somebody else because that takes t time away from enjoying the people in my life that I want to spend time with you know That's worthless energy, quite frankly. I'm gonna go that cookie is so good, I have to eat the other half of it. These are literally, I'm gonna show you guys these. These are from BP. They have the best peanut butter cookies in the entire world. Get go, I guess. I think they're from get go. Although, I'm really hungry right now. Just had a sandwich for dinner. Oh my lord, the other half of this cookie is huge. I only got a small part of the cookie. You know, and I think it sounds rather simple, but like when you break things down, it really is rather simple, you know? And, I don't know, I see a lot of my friends that are really struggling. With that mentality. And it makes me sad. Because it's like... You know, you should... And they don't say this, but it's like, I mean, if you had my life, you'd feel sorry for me too, or you'd act the way that I do, which I used to be like, you know, or they really want you to understand why they can't be positive about things. And I'm like, like I said the other day, there's always hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people going through worse things than you're going through today. I was sitting on Tanya's patio. It was so beautiful tonight. And the wind was blowing so nice. And um, I was sitting out there listening to one of our friends speak in this group. Because like we each read for like five minutes. Maybe more. We pass it to somebody. And then we come back and we talk about what we read. But it's mostly our personal experiences for how we relate to that. It's like a literature meeting, but not. Because it's not like a sanctioned 12 step meeting, which is approved. It's like just a group of friends getting together, you know, reading about it. So, there was a moment when one of our friends that lives, she's talking about the hurricane, missed her, and she's in Florida. Like, she was telling my story, like, what she was saying I so related to. I was just sitting there on this couch outside looking at Tanya's backyard and listening to the birds you know and feeling the wind blow and I was like I'm so in the moment what I just feel so good That cookie was, that cookie was the mom right there. Sarah took down all of her Halloween decorations. And she was gonna start putting up her Christmas decorations. 
she's so funny. She like really went overboard with her Halloween decorations this year. She was so proud of them. They were so cute. starting to like finally get our bedroom done you know I'm excited to have my little reading nook in there too I don't probably think I'll use it very often but it's nice to know that I'm gonna have it you know and uh, I'm excited about that I'm gonna be kind of sad to have like not have my little couch over there though anymore I don't think we're in a hurry to change that though. We'll wait until we, we wanna get this big mirror. Alex was like wanting to get this mirror that had LED lights on it. I was like, I don't know what all of this like, cause then he was like, we could get these lights for downstairs, like, you know, where we're gonna like on the wall, where we're gonna put like all of our memories. And he was like, we could each like write our name or write our initial out and then have it turn into like neon signs like for that wall. I was like, what is going on? Like with all the neon and the lights and the color change. I mean, is this like, are we opening a disco? Like, I just am not really into like the lights and stuff that much. You know what I mean? And he started laughing and um, he was like, I just thought like as an idea, but then like he sent me these pictures the other day of these because I said, like, where we're going to move the dresser, we should put, like, one of those long mirrors. And I was thinking, like, one of those six or, you know, seven-foot mirrors that you kind of just, like, lean up against the wall. You know the ones you see at, like, Restoration Hardware and stuff like that? I love that look, you know, that just very, like, kind of, you know, Soho apartment with, like, cement flooring. And then you just, like, have this, like, huge mirror leaning up, you know, like, with, like, the kind of, like, the nice brocade edge or whatever on it. A frame and he was like he sent me his picture and he goes well then I'll if he goes since you're gonna buy the holiday bedding I'll buy the mirror and he goes I like these and they were like these LED light mirrors <laughs> I think he like wants them for like taking pictures of his outfits or something and I was like I don't know what I think about those mirrors like I don't love those mirrors he hasn't brought it up since I just texted it back and I was like I don't I'm not in love with those mirrors um, I don't think they were super expensive either, and they did just like fit right onto a wall, but they have like this LED light all around them. Do you know what they reminded me of? Have you seen those phone cases? That ever, I actually wanted one for a long time. My friend Brittany had one. We were, I, she was like, have you seen these before? I was like, yes, girl, I've seen them for years. But anyway, <laughs> do you know those phone cases that light up so they give you like the perfect selfie? I can't remember what they're called. They start with an L. But anyway, um, the, actually the first time I ever saw him was with Br that Brian boy that, um, he's like a TikTok star kind of person now, I guess, or something. It's so funny because I watch his TikToks and he's like, this like rich person drinking like champagne out of a little bottle, like while he's like grocery shopping. And like the whole joke of the TikToks is that he's supposed to be like this really super like rich guy. But that was not my impression of him whatsoever when I met him in Ultra and we hung out. Like, he was not like that at all. He was so humble and down to earth. But anyway, I think it's all like this, like, act he's putting on for, like, TikTok and stuff. But he's doing real well on the TikTok, so more power to him. But, uh, he had one of those, um, what do you call it? Those, uh, phone cases and that luminous or something phone cases. And that was the first time I had ever seen one of those phone cases that lights up. Do you know what I'm talking about? It looks like one of those round, like those mirrors that has like, you know, lights all around it. Like, like they have it like dressing rooms for movie stars or like, you know, actors on Broadway. It looks kind of like that. Um, but you do get like a really good selfie with it. I just don't know that I really care that much about having a really good selfie. You know what I mean? I could actually buy one and then just like when I'm going to do things, like take it with me. Valor 
Valerie likes it when I give her shout outs in the vlog. Hey Valerie, hey Valerini. I'm trying to convince Valerini to move into my neighborhood if there are condos available. She's not convinced. <laughs> I would love all of my friends to move into my neighborhood. Tanya said that she would love to buy a condo in there. Um, and my cousin Caroline was like, oh, I would love to live in your neighborhood. Can you imagine that would be such the bomb? Do you guys remember people used to say the bomb.com? That would be such the bomb.com to have like, I can't believe I just said the bomb.com. That would be such the bomb.com to have all of my neighbor or all of my good GDs and my cousin living in my neighborhood. I would love that. My mother-in-law, when she was at our house, I don't know when that was, about a week ago, she said something, and she said, I'm gonna move in with you and Alex. And I said, oh, okay. I said, when is that gonna be? <laughs> and she said, now. <laughs> and I said, she's got a smirk on her face. And I said, no. And she said, you would, you would refuse me? <laughs> and I said, we have one bedroom. <laughs> And our basement isn't finished. She started laughing. She's like, not now, but she was like, since you guys are the ones that aren't going to have grandkids, I'll probably end up like with you when I'm older. And I was like, I would have no problem with that whatsoever. She would be the easiest person in the world to have. I mean, like she does all of her own stuff. Like she loves to just like be doing projects and seeing her friends and, you know, like, um, and she goes to bed super early, too. I was like, that would be totally fine. I said, if we had a place in Florida or here or whatever, if we got the basement finished, you're more than welcome, you know, to be down. I mean, I would have no problem with that whatsoever. She was like, really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> now, my mother, who I love dearly, who is probably rolling over in heaven right now, she's like, seriously, rolling over in her grave. That's the saying, isn't it? My mother, who I love dearly, I, I don't know that I would have... <laughs> All my haters out there are like... Peter said he would never live with his mother. Yes, that's absolutely right. She would have driven me absolutely insane. She would have driven me insane, and it would have been every day. Peter, 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 Peter. Uh, Peter, did you read the did you read the list of books that I left for you? Uh, Peter, did you? Um, hey, I wanted you to look at my Walkman and see why it's not Peter. Did, it was, ah! I loved my mother, but she was very bad. Like, I would come over to have coffee with my mom, and we would sit down, and she would say, and she would have it, like, on the edge of the couch. We don't have this couch anymore that she used to have, but anyway, she would have it, like, on the edge of this couch. This, oh, it just went out of focus. That's probably telling, that's God probably telling me to shut my mouth. Anyway, she would have this little white piece of paper, you know, because our whole family has always been obsessed, meaning, my whole family, meaning uh, myself, my mom and my aunt <laughs> those little notebooks you know those I love those little notebooks so she would have like a piece of paper torn out of there and it would say like things to tell Peter at the top of it and it would be like all these like sh like notes that she had written down throughout the week to tell me but they were it was never things like I love you <laughs> you know I mean she told me that enough anyway but it was never stuff like that it was never stuff like you know like I don't know. It wasn't like congratulations on this or whatever. I mean, my mom was great with all that stuff anyway. But it was always like things that needed to be fixed or about somebody that she read had passed away in an obituary or something. I mean, it was just always like business. It was like my mom and I had this business meeting, you know, every time we got together. It was kind of funny when I look back on it. But I was thinking today, do you think it's interesting how like you guys, I am so tired sometimes when I come out to vlog. That I know that back in the day I was consistently doing an hour and a half to like two hour vlogs. And I know that they've gotten shorter. I'm going to try to do some throughout the week. Like at least one or two that are a little bit longer. In the last week I think I did like one or two that were like an hour and 20 some minutes. So I'll try to do a couple of those. Because I know that people really enjoyed the long vlogs. You guys, well you said you did at least. When I was doing them. Um, what are you thinking about the length of the vlogs right now? Like... Is this 50 to a minute, 50 to an hour? Is it too short? Do you guys like it? Um, let me know what you think. I'll tell you what I, why I was really thinking this was because I was like, 
watching one of those uh, Emily Baker videos. She's the attorney that like goes through like the, you know the complaints and all that kind of stuff. The depositions, I guess. I don't know whatever it is that she goes through. She hasn't gone through anything any depositions yet, I don't think. But she's been on YouTube for a long time. But I was like watching one of her videos, and her videos are like right at an hour mark. They're like an hour and ten minutes, or an hour and two minutes. And like I would get to the end of it, and I would be like, oh, like now I just got into it, like in the last fifteen minutes. So is there like a it stopped? Oh, this focus thing tonight is driving me crazy. I don't know what is going on with it. Um, did you say I have my polka dot shirt on tonight? Um, can you let me know in the comment sections, like, what is a good length for the vlog for you? Or, like, what length would you like? I'm not going to finish that Gianna DeLeon book tonight. I would have to stay up for, like till like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm just not doing that. I have my meeting tonight. Tony and I didn't talk about it, but I'm assuming that we're going, which means I have to be getting ready at 6.30 to get out of the house by seven. Well, 6.40 at the latest. And I have a bunch of stuff I wanna do tomorrow, so. Yeah, I say that and now watch. I'll stay up that late and do that. But can you guys please let me know like how long like the vlogs you like below? Because I know like it's interesting like when I read the comments, because some people that I would assume like longer versions really don't like the longer versions. They're like, no, I like like it when it's like 30 minutes or 40 minutes because I can catch up. So let me know in the comment section below. But do you guys you do know that I did a three hour vlog this summer, right? <sighs> I did though, I was so proud of it that night that I hit it. Because I didn't even really expect that I was gonna hit it that night. I think every season, I don't even think a lot of people watched it that night, that three hour vlog, but I think um, every season I should, <laughs> I shouldn't say this, because that means I've got about three weeks to do, uh, well a month actually, to do uh, another three hour vlog. But every season I should do one three hour vlog. I love when people comment on my videos, like people that are new. Like not new and, and like enjoy it, but people that like just kind of randomly find my thing. And they're like, this isn't a vlog. Like you need to look up what a vlog is. You need to look up what a vlog is. <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> a vlog is like literally like a video like blog could be anything that you want it to be. A lot of these people that have like turned like their videos like this is actually more like the fundamental idea of what a video vlog, a vlog, a video vlog, a vlog. I used to call them vlogs back in the day is um, just sitting and talking is actually more fundamentally what it is than when you see these people that like are out and doing stuff and whatever like that's that's more of kind of like follow my life and see what I do. The reason I bring it up is because I got one of those comments the other day. You know what? We had a friend of ours. She, she and her husband live in a house now that's gorgeous. But they live in these apartments over here. And these apartments are so nice. I drive by them and I think they're so like not very pretty from the outside. But the inside, they were gorgeous and they were huge too. She had like this huge... Um, a lot of the apartments today are doing those huge islands, aren't they? She had like a big island, huge island. A lot of the apartments are doing that today. God, I wish I had had that when I was back in an apartment living. I miss living in an apartment sometimes. I miss calling them up and having them fix stuff is what I miss. God, my chimney would be fixed. I need to do that. I keep on forgetting every day to call and have somebody come out and fix it. I wonder if my Golden Goose shoes made it back to Italy yet. I haven't gotten an email about it. But I better get the refund on those shoes. I'm gonna be so bitter if I do not. I'm gonna be like, send those shoes back to me. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, send those shoes back to me and I'm selling them on eBay. <laughs> Cause that's how it's gonna go right here. They're really heavy. I picked them up and they're like seriously like heavy. They're cute though. All right, another project, cleaning out my closet. God, I've talked about that forever, haven't I? Anyway, <clears throat> it'll get done one of these days. 
All right, you guys, listen, I'm gonna listen to my, uh, here, let me put a little lip gloss on. I don't even think I've done that. Yeah, this, have I, have I done it? I put the lip balm on. You guys, I am almost out of this lip balm. I have another thing of it at home, because when I, where is it even? When I ordered, here it is. When I ordered it from Sol de Janeiro, I bought two of them, but look, it's, I can't turn it, it's out. Yeah, and I'm hitting the edges of it. It's a lip thing. Sandra Bernhardt said that in a David Letterman interview. And I've loved it ever since. It's the one where she had the black jacket on. And they had all the candy kisses on the desk. And she read from the book Rockstar. It's probably my favorite interview that anybody has ever done in life. To achieve a fuller lip. If you've never seen it, look up the Sandra Bernhardt, David Letterman interview. And it's when she's got like curly hair. It's like she's at her peak with her show and everything because her show is doing really well. And she's got on this like black jacket that like buttons over. She looks incredible. I love Sandra Bernhardt. Well, Sandra Bernhardt, but he calls her Sandra Bernhardt. Uh, everybody else, a lot of people call her Sandra. I call her Sandra. I love Sandra Bernhardt so much. I know she goes by Sandra. Everybody's like, it's Sandra. I like Sandra better, but anyway. I think because she was always, like, I talk about, like, comedians who have influenced me. She's so sharp, you know? Like, such a sharp comedian. Such a witty, intelligent, intellectual pop cultural referenced comedian. I think that's one of the things I love about her. Anyway, I'm getting off here. I don't know why I started talking about Sandra Bernhardt. I could talk about her all day long. But um, I love you guys so much. So I, I think actually I'm gonna download a little Sandra Bernhardt. I'm gonna download a little Sandra. And um, I love you guys. So I'm gonna get off here now and um, I'm gonna listen to the Janet DeLeon series. I'm gonna make it a real quick outro and just say if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And don't forget you can start your day over whenever you want. And uh, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody, let them know how much they mean to you. And also, like I always say, practice random acts of kindness. But like also, also like I always say, don't tell anyone. Also, like I always say, practice random acts of kindness. But also, like I always say, don't tell anyone. Just do nice deeds today and be kind to one another. To put, do nice things to put kindness, love, compassion, understanding, and forgiveness out there in the world. And like it says in the Four Agreements, always lead with love. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.